Hello and a warm welcome. I am Armin Trost, Professor for Organizational Behavior at the Furtwangen University in Germany and this is my course on Social Research Methods. So welcome everybody to this other episode. It's the third multivariate statistical procedure that we discuss in this series. Uh, and this time we're going to talk about multidimensional scaling. Uh, it's a method that I, I truly like. Uh, I use this method also in my, in my doctoral thesis. Um, it's it's uh, maybe a little bit underestimated, but it's, it's pretty cool as, as, as you're going to see. What is multidimensional scaling? Um, we can say, uh, I mean, to start with a kind of academic definition, um, it's, 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 it's the way to, to, to create a visual representation of distances or dissimilarities between sets of objects. I mean, that does not make sense, right? <laughs> what is that? I, mean, I, I, I give you an example and then it becomes instantly clear. And the classic textbook example uh, when it comes to multidimensional scaling is that you talk about the distances of cities. It, this, is, this example is not about social science, but it helps us a lot to understand the underlying idea. I will come to a, a, social, a social example later on, but, but that example really helps us in the moment to understand multidimensional scaling. So, now I'm... I'm already pretty old. <laughs> when, when, I, when, I, when I grew up, we did not have uh, Google Maps or something like this. We did not have any navigation systems, not at all. The only thing that we had were maps, printed maps. And sometimes you had this, I don't know the English term, this box, you know, this... Uh, where you have all the maps, maybe, I mean, all the street maps of Germany, that was a thick book, you know, it was really a thick book. And, and, and what, you, what you found in the appendix of those map books, now I put it that way, is a kind of distant matrix. A distant matrix. In this distant matrix, I mean, you find all the cities listed in the lines and in the columns. And then, you could tell, okay, what is the distance between Munich and Berlin? Yeah, and then you get a number. It's, it's written in the cell. You can imagine this. Yeah? So, it's a distant matrix, yeah? where you have all the distances between all sorts of different cities. Yeah? Can you imagine this? Now assume you have this one but you do not have a map, you just have the distance matrix. Uh, what multidimensional scaling does is it creates the map. <laughs> it creates the map. And why is that useful? Because, I mean, look at the distance matrix. If I would show you a distant matrix of all large cities, maybe in Europe, you, you, you could not imagine how how that map would look like. So, where is now Berlin? Where is Amsterdam? Where is Madrid? Where is London? Where is Paris? Where is Vienna? Where is Copenhagen? You, you would, based on just this matrix, you, you, you could not imagine how reality would look like. But what you want is a map. You want to see it. Right? And this is what uh, multidimensional scaling creates. It creates the map based on the distance matrix. Now you might ask yourself, well, why is that? Why could that be relevant in social science? Well, it's very, very relevant. And there is one discipline I was not talking too much about in this entire course. It's about sociometric uh, methods, sociometric methods. What is that? Let me share this with you uh, 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 real quick. What we always discussed in this series is that we have, we measured characteristics of individual people or sometimes groups, but there were always characteristics that relate to one single object. For instance, we have 
satisfaction of an employee, we have agreeableness of, of, of a person, we have intelligence of a person. These are all characteristics that relate to one single person. Okay? And, and this is what we very often do. Also, also when we, we, we run experiments, I mean, we have our subjects and these subjects, they individually re react to a maybe experimental treatment and then we measure the reaction or the behavior or whatever related to a single person, to a single subject, right? What we do uh, with sociometric uh, methods is we do not measure characteristics of one person, but we look at the relation between at least two people. The relation, not the person. Right. Um, so, when we look in the, to social realities, I mean, you all know, you have people with whom you are friends, and there are people with whom you are not friends. Right. Some people are close to you, emotionally, for instance, and some are very far. I mean, most people you do not even know. Most people you have never met. So even in your class. There are two, three people to whom you are very close. You, you might be friends and with the others you just, yeah, you accept them. <laughs> right? so, hmm. yeah? so between, just pick out two persons in a class and you look at the relation between the two. And, 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 and now what you, what you could do is, I mean, you can stick to this example of your class, is Let's say you have 30 people in your class, 30. Um, then you could ask everybody of these 30 people, look, here are the other 29. How is the relation to each of the 29 others? Yeah? How would you estimate uh, your relation from, let's say, very close to very distant? Now comes the term distant. Yeah? So this, this idea of distance, which is absolutely central in multidimensional sc scaling, can also be interpreted in a, in a social way. To some people you are close, or to some people you are distant. Right? Uh, I mean, when you do this, this kind of sociometric analysis, a typical result you get is also a distance matrix. So, I have one here, we have person 1 to 7. And what you see in this matrix is that the distance to these people might differ. Yeah? To some people, the relation is very close, and to some, it's very distant. And we can say maybe in this example here that when it's white, there is no relationship at all. If it's dark or gray, there is a close relationship. And when it's a lighter gray, it's a, mm, it's a medium relationship. So, I like the other person, but it's not my friend. Right? So, and this is something that you get. right? It's very, very interesting. It's very interesting. So, to see the relation between all the people in a group, right? I did a similar analysis in my doctoral thesis where the objects were not individuals but teams, and I analyzed how close are different teams inside the organization, right? It was about a lateral collaboration. And for instance, you learn that maybe marketing and sales are very close, production and production planning is very close, HR is very <laughs> a little bit far off, <laughs> quality management is far off, or sometimes close to production. So it's, it's very interesting to see a map of the organization where you see how close are different teams to each other. And it's sometimes a strategic question that you want that specific teams work closely together. They have strong ties, strong relationships, while with others you don't care. And, with a, and I simply ask the teams, with whom do you work the most? With which other teams do you work the most? And then we had this distance matrix, and then I calculated a map. And that was amazing. I mean, when the CEO saw the map, you really, I mean, a two-dimensional uh, uh, picture where you have all the different departments and you see how close they are. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And, and that, that differs very often from the formal organization, from the formal hierarchy. Yeah, it's very exciting. So, as I said, as a result, you get a map. And I, I show you here a map 
uh, based on cities. I go back to the city example because that's, uh, um, that's easy to understand. And you see now all the cities, uh, not all, but many cities from Europe. Uh, and I'm sorry when you come from a certain country and I miss your particular capital. Uh, don't take it personal. Uh, in, 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 all, in all European uh, countries, we have wonderful capitals. And, and I mean, what you see here, I mean, that, that must ring, uh, that must trigger uh, music in your ear when you hear Madrid, London, Paris, Amsterdam, Bern, Copenhagen, Rome, Prague, Vienna, Budapest, Warsaw, Berlin. Oh, wonderful. So based on the distant matrix, you might create a map like this. Now, when you look at this map, I mean, the multiple dimensional scaling does not know a concept like north and south. And it does not even know how to mirror that. Is that the right way to mirror it this way or this way? And, and you can see in this picture, I mirrored it a little bit. Yeah. So now this needs, needs a little bit of fantasy to, to, to reshape this map in a way so that it fits the, the real map. <laughs> but what you see in this picture is the distances are real. The distances are real. I mean, look at Berlin. Berlin is pretty close to Copenhagen. Berlin is pretty close to Prague. Uh, Amsterdam is close to, to, to Copenhagen. London is far off from Berlin than Amsterdam. And so you, you, see, uh, you see, I mean, the distances, they are real. They are real. And, and uh, I, I didn't want to show you this real map because this is not what you get. This is not what you would get in a multidimensional scaling because, as I said, multidimensional scaling does not know the reality. It doesn't just know the distances. And what you do now is when you have this kind of analysis, you want to see whether this map that uh, the, this procedure has created, whether that really reflects the distances of your matrix. And this is not always easy. Sometimes there is some stress. There's does not really fit. Sometimes you do not need just two dimensions, as in this example, but sometimes you need three dimensions, maybe, so that it better fits. And so what you what you actually are doing, you look at the distances on your map, and I have highlighted here one, uh, the distance between London and Paris. That's the predicted, that's the predicted distance between London and Paris based on this map. And now you can compare, okay, London, Paris, this is the distance uh, in this model created by the analysis. And now you compare this predicted distance with the real distance in the, in the matrix. And the closer the predicted distances are to the, to the real distances in the, in, the, in the matrix, the lower is the stress. And there is this little formula that we have, you do not need to understand. The only idea that you need to take home is that now a comparison takes place with what the model predicted, what you see in the map, and the real distances given in the, in the matrix. And this is an outcome of the statistical procedure that you always get. And of course, a stress of zero would be perfect, would be perfect. And if the stress would be 0.2, that would be poor. So you want to be uh, closer to zero, okay? So to sum up, multidimensional scaling is a procedure that turns distances or dissimilarities into a visual representation. And where is that in particular uh, suitable? In social science when it comes to sociometric analysis. And that's, uh, that's something, something really cool. I, by the way, even what you find with this analysis, you find clusters. Yeah, you find, you can imagine, you see it maybe on, on the map, you see that many people, many groups are very close together, but distant to all the others. It's a cluster. And this is even relevant when it comes to uh, epidemiology, because we know that a virus spreads within a cluster. Okay, and if you see in a cluster there is some infection that you then you better put the entire cluster into a quarantine. So, so it's also when it comes to our current topic of the COVID nineteen that this analysis could be could be kind of relevant. Okay, so 
That's about this method.